Hello and welcome. You're watching the Buck Stops here, and I'm Barkha Dutt. On the program this evening, one of India's top superstars, Salman Khan, will spend five years in jail after he was found guilty of many charges, including culpable homicide in a hit-and-run case that took place in 2002 and killed one person and injured four others. The victims, of course, were asleep on a pavement in the Bandra suburb of Mumbai. At the moment, Salman Khan is not in jail because he's appealed against the verdict in the High Court and has got interim bail on the grounds that his lawyers have not yet got a copy of the judgment. While ordinary people across India have welcomed the verdict as proof that everyone is equal before the law, Bollywood and the film industry at large has been quick to rally behind Salman Khan, with some of them even calling the verdict unfair. On the buck stops here tonight, we ask whether this verdict will provide a template, a precedent for all future such cases and is proof that India's law and legal system is the great leveller between the rich and the poor. We also ask whether Bollywood's response is appropriate. Is it understandable? As Bollywood plays victim, has it and the media forgotten about the real victims, those who were injured, one of them who died in that 2002 hit and run case. Let's introduce our panel this evening. Joining us from Mumbai is Mahesh Jaitwalani, Senior Advocate in the Supreme Court. We're also joined by Shobha Day from Mumbai, well-known author and columnist. From Bangalore tonight, we're joined by Sohail Seth. He's an author and a brand guru and an advertising consultant as well. We're also joined by Zafar Sareshwala. He's not just a businessman and the Vice Chancellor of a university, but a close family friend of Salman Khan and his father, Salim Khan. From Mumbai today, we're also joined by senior journalist, Nikhil Wagli, and also with us uh, on the program tonight is Farah Khan Ali, a jewellery designer whose tweets supporting Salman Khan have attracted a great deal of controversy along with those of singer Abhijit. And last but absolutely not the least when it comes to this program, one of the victims telling his story in his own words from Uttar Pradesh tonight, we're joined by Mohammed Kaleem, one of the four who was injured in this hit and run case for which Salman Khan has been found guilty. Mahesh Jaitwalani, I'll start with you. As a matter of law, how significant is this verdict? Would you go so far as to say it is a watershed moment? Uh, will this now provide a template for other such cases in the future? Well, I think uh, no, because the watershed moment came with Alistair Pereira's case. Uh, remember the same case, uh, but a little later in 2006, Salman's is 2002. Yeah. That surprisingly was over before Salman's case. And I think the template was really set there uh, that, uh, you know, accidents have become now uh, really legion in India. Uh, rash driving or speedy driving and drinking and driving. The Supreme Court said that it's time that, you know, we had enhanced sentences. And they actually brought these kind of cases within the scope of culpable homicide, not amounting to murder. I think that was a watershed case. So Salman is, the precedent has already been set for Salman Khan. But Mahesh, if I may ask you, in the Alester Pereira case, seven people were killed. But if I'm not wrong, the Bombay court initially just gave a six-month six month term. And then there was huge criticism and he finally ended up with just three years. Salman's actually got more than that with five years. Yeah, well, I, I have to say there's disparity over there. That Alistair was, Alistair Pereira was lucky because uh, what happened in that case was that he was acquitted of the, of the, of the uh, charge of culpable homicide. The, court, the lower court found him only guilty of uh, rash and negligent driving, which yeah. for which the maximum was two years. Yeah. Uh, the state filed an enhancement appeal and said culpable homicide should have been imposed, should have, he should have been convicted for the same. Mm. And the high court then uh, convicted him for culpable homicide not amounting to murder. That's why that was where the template really started, and then said that the sentence should be three years. Yeah. Uh, Alistair Pereira then carried the matter to the Supreme Court, but the state didn't carry an enhancement of sentence appeal. Yeah. So this, while the Supreme Court said that uh, you know three years was too little in, in Alistair Pereira's case, it says we are powerless to do anything because the state has not filed an appeal for enhancement of sentence. 
I just want to bring in Shobha Day now. Shobha, your your tweets were a so bit. So he got. He yeah. Got your point. Uh, uh, Shobha, what's the big takeaway? When I look at the public responses, especially in the social media space today, it's almost like there are two parallel universes. There is the, the ordinary citizen who's saying, here's proof that everyone is equal before the law. And then there's the film industry that is saying, what a sad day, we feel so terrible. Some even going uh, so far as to say what has happened is most unfair. Almost all of them forgetting that there, was, there are victims, there are poor people, some of them even questioning why these poor people were sleeping on the pavement. Is Bollywood playing victim? Is Bollywood out of sync with what most Indians are feeling today, Shobha? Well, it, there's always been a serious disconnect between what Bollywood thinks, feels and says in the public domain and what the rest of India thinks, feels and behaves when something like this happens. Now, in Salman's case, it's a very interesting phenomenon because he's not just our most bankable star, I'd say the most bankable star, but also there's a huge amount of support for him outside Bollywood as well. While the common person is definitely feeling that this is, uh, like you said, the word, you use the word template, yeah. that there is hope for the average person in India accused of the same crime, that there's nobody but nobody who's above the law. But there are also those who are arguing, and I'm talking about just regular people, I've spoken to quite a few of them, hmm. who feel that perhaps it's his celebrity hood that has got him this very, uh, very serious and strict kind of, uh, the, I mean, what, the five years uh, hmm. a jail term. Hmm. They also argue that there are people, politicians in particular, netas, uh, cops, uh, other people uh, who get away with that and much, much more. Hmm. So the common person, uh, divided opinion, in terms of Bollywood, yes, Bollywood would support one of their own, it's uh, but natural. But in the process, I mean, it's fine to, uh, to display solidarity. By all means, do it. Mm. By all means, declare your love. But for God's sake, show some sensitivity towards yeah. the victims. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot be so high-handed, you cannot be so arbitrary, and you cannot say, why are they sleeping on the pavement? They're sleeping on the pavement because they have no other place to sleep. They're homeless and they're poor. So uh, it, it, it's, it defeats me how anybody could uh, make a, a, a mockery out of the lives of the thousands in Mumbai who spend their lives growing up on the pavement, sleeping on the pavement, procreating on the pavement for heaven's sake. I, I, want to, I want to just uh, go back to Mahesh for a moment and then I want to hear from Mohammed Kaleem, one of the victims. Uh, Mahesh, this debate continues. Are celebrities... Ta uh, judged by different standards are those standards harsher are those standards softer questions are being asked as to why salman khan uh, got interim bail in a hearing that lasted just 10 minutes now i spoke with harish salve his lawyer from what i understand it's on a technicality they said we haven't got a copy of the judgment but the perception has already become see how quickly it took 13 years to get a conviction and 10 minutes for him to get interim bail so how do you see this as a lawyer Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Barkha, I just want to make quick uh, three quick points on that. Yeah. Firstly, it, it, it is abysmal that this trial should have taken so long, 13 years. But that's a systemic delay. I don't think you can blame either prosecution or defense. Uh, cases are just languishing for 20 years. Our whole criminal justice system and disposal of cases is completely broken down. It's time the courts really paid heed to uh, to the lack of quality of justice. Uh, by doing two things, they have to qu qu quantitatively they have to increase the number of judges because we have that lowest ratio in the, con in the country and qualitatively they have to pay judges much more than they're paying them right now. That's a given. Until you get that, this delay is, uh, is going to be endemic. But you can't blame either Salman or the prosecution unless you, you say that Salman Khan asked for an adjournment of every one of those uh, 13 days when the case was on. So I don't think it's fair to blame Salman for that. And of course, if he's convicted, he's going to move as expeditiously, I mean, uh, for, for, for freedom as possible. That's, uh, uh, you, his lawyers are going to do that. Freedom is a precious asset. And I know he's convicted. But so long as there's hope for him and he has a right of appeal and a right to get bail pending appeal, he's going to exercise that right. Okay. So I don't think, and you know, we should get away with all these extraneous because judges are extremely mature, even at the sessions court level. I don't think we should get into the fact that extraneous 
are taking time to judge a celebrity or non-celebrity. Judges go by the law and the facts that are presented before them. Okay, I just want to bring in Suhail now uh, and then we'll hear from Mohammed Kaleem. Suhail, you've written a piece for NDTV.com where you've actually argued that there's a, uh, uh, th that all of us are kind of vultures that prey on the misfortunes of others. My own sense is that I see that the public response has lurched from fanboy sympathy, which has forgotten to be empathetic to the victims, to armchair schadenfreude. People deriving vicarious pleasure from bringing someone else down. There is no proportionate uh, response perhaps that comes with the turf of being a celebrity. What for you has struck you the most in the public response and what does this verdict say to you today, Sohail? Two things, both of which I have mentioned in my NDTV article. Number one, as Mahesh very rightly talks about the systemic delays, I, I therefore argue that the verdict is actually a verdict on us as a country and on us as a society that we allow a system not to change despite all the platitudes which are given on annual Supreme Court days and High Court days where people say, oh, we must overhaul the criminal justice system, mm. but nothing happens. Mm. The second is, what drove me completely, what saddened me was from the morning, no one focused, and I'm delighted that you've got uh, Kaleem Saab on your, on your show, but not one anchor, not one television channel, not one online uh, digital portal even talked about the victim and the victim is there are two victims here the Salman Khan victim and the families that a one lost a family member yeah. and the others who were injured yeah so what happens is celebrity dum takes over yeah. and the entire debate then moves to an individual rather than to overhauling a system which today is at an inflection point so your phrase about watershed actually carries more weight when you analyze it and and link it to the enormous judicial overhauling that this country requires. Yeah. We cannot have a hit and run case decided at first conviction base after 13 years. I yeah. mean, for God's sake, we are, you know, we are living in cuckoo land if we believe this is just. And, and, and so he'll think of those who were the victims who lived with this since 2002. I want to now go across to Mohammed Kaleem. Absolutely. I, I want to bring in Mohammed Kaleem. Mohammed Kaleem Saab, uh, पूरा देश आज बात कर रहा है तेरह साल तक शायद सब आपको भूल गए आज मीडिया वालों ने आपको याद किया आप उनमें से थे जिनको चोट पहुंची इस हिट एंड रन केस में और आपको मुंबई शहर छोड़कर जाना पड़ा आप अपने गांव वापस चले गए आज आप इस वर्डिक्ट को किस नजरिए से देखते हैं कलीम साहब जी आपको आपकी क्या भावनाएं हैं आज सलमान खान को जब दोषी पाया गया है आप क्या कहेंगे क्या कहेंगे हमको कुछ मिलना चाहिए बस मुआवजा हमको चाहिए आपको इससे मतलब नहीं सजा हो या कुछ भी हो आपको ये आपको फर्क नहीं पड़ता कि सलमान खान जेल जाएंगे या नहीं जाएंगे अब हमको क्या मालूम जेल जाएंगे या नहीं जाएंगे वो तो अदालत जाने जो करेगी करेगी हमको कुछ नहीं हमको खाली मुआवजा चाहिए बस हमारी जिंदगी खराब हो गयी आप हमारे दर्शकों को बताइए कि आपकी जिंदगी कैसे बदली उस इस इस हिट एंड रन केस के बाद जब आपको चोट पहुंची आप मुंबई छोड़ के क्यों वापस चले गए अपने गांव हमसे काम नहीं होता है इसके लिए चले आए चोट की वजह से जो आपको चोट लगी थी उसकी वजह से जी जी तो आप काम नहीं कर पाए मुंबई में उसके बाद जब इंजरी की वजह से जी तो आप कह रहे हैं कि हमें कोई लेना देना नहीं सलमान खान जेल जाए या नहीं हमें मुआवजा मिलना चाहिए आपको लेकिन लोग कहते हैं कि न्याय भी एक चीज होती है जस्टिस जिसको कहते हैं न्याय भी होना चाहिए जिसने कोई गलत काम किया जेल जाना भी जरूरी है जो पनिशमेंट है वो भी जरूरी है तो आप इसके बारे में आज क्या कहेंगे आपको क्या आपको कभी लगा की सलमान खान जैसे कोई बड़ा सुपर जेल जा सकता है हमको कुछ नहीं लगा हमको क्या पता है आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे जो सारे हमारे लोग बैठे हैं आज प्रोग्राम में उनको क्या कहना चाहेंगे आप कलीम साहब हमको हमारा क्या हुआ हाथ पैर सब कमर पूरा दर्द करता है मेरा बे काम हो गया हूँ हमको कुछ नहीं हमारा जिंदगी खराब हो गया है तो हमको कुछ उसका जुर्माना चाहिए हमको मुआवजा जी सो दिस इज दिस इज वेरी दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड पॉइंट मोमेंट हियर इज द विक्टम स्पीकिंग एंड सोहेल एक्चुअली एन डी टी वी हैज बीन रिपोर्टिंग ऑन द स्टोरी ऑफ दिस फैमिली थ्रू द डे विद माई कॉलिंग नेहा मसी ऑन द ग्राउंड सो वी डू बिलीव इन गिविंग वॉइस 
to the people whom the story is about it's about people like mohammed kaleem but he is saying he is saying and if if you if any of you just want to come in on this and then i'll go to zafar sareesh wala shobha what did you make of the fact that he's saying i'm less concerned with salman going to jail or not i'm more concerned with about how my life has been uh, impacted and whether salman khan goes to jail or not is not going to improve my life shobha first and then mahesh and then i'll open it up for the others shobha but I I think I think it's a, it's a very honest and non dramatized uh, truth yeah. and we should respect him for saying it like it is it really doesn't matter to him one way or the other his life has changed irrevocably and forever hmm. and for uh, over 12 years he's lived with the pain he's had to he had to leave the city where he was possibly making a living and he has lived in in, in a complete uh, desperation and ignored by society at large yeah. so no amount of compensation even if it's monetary monetary compensation is going to give back that life of his yeah. so if there is a certain resignation if he's being a little cynical if he's being resigned to his fate right now and not thinking about salman khan as the rest of the country seems to be doing one should completely empathize with this man and yeah. reach out to him yeah. because his pain is palpable and uh, his life is is over but you know uh, and with but you know what i'm thinking i'm what i'm thinking he's listening to kaleem life on what, every level but what i'm thinking listening to kaleem today is the kind of outrageous statements we've heard and we'll and I'll, i'll be asking farah that in a moment from now but why do people live on the pavement i mean it's almost like the rich asking why do the poor not have homes but mahesh you wanted to come in there and then i'll take it straight to farah mahesh absolutely yeah mahesh about uh, yeah. barkha so far as so, so far as kalim uh, you, uh, the so far as kalim is concerned oh, no, yeah uh, you know there was no death caused he had injuries and therefore he can talk about compensation and he, he could have even compounded the case the complication in salman's case is that one person died so you have to really find out how the family yeah. uh, of that person feels yes. because even they could have actually compounded the case and yes. then you know this is the dichotomy the supreme court on the one hand says that uh, you know no no amount of compensation can uh can co compensate for the loss of human life that's what the supreme court said in alice pereira's case yeah. and they said they, this must be taken seriously and there must be enhanced sentencing but then on the other hand not kalim because as i said there no death involved there's only injury yeah. but somebody else say somebody who dies and his family yeah. what is their response to this kind of supreme court observation i think that's a good would point would they compensate would they say that the the death yeah. of what that so that's an interesting point i mean i yeah. i'd like to see what the, the family yeah. member of the deceased person would say yeah but, and that's nurullah's family and we are trying but, to to find them as well uh, 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 so he'll just hold on for a second because i want to get farha khan ali in now farha you heard mohammed kaleem uh, he was among those who who was on the pavement uh, in this hit and run case yes, here's what you say here's what you say you are questioning the government you're saying the government should be responsible for housing people if no one was sleeping on the road in any other country salman would not have driven over anybody so it's not salman's fault that he was without a license at the wheel that he was drunk driving that he lost control of the car it's the government's fault poor salman that people were sleeping on the street you then go on to say it's like penalizing yeah. a train driver because someone decided to cross the tracks and you finally say no one should be sleeping on the road or footpath farah it's not people don't sleep on the footpath by choice aren't yes. these grossly insensitive comments to make um darkha can i just say something um when i wrote that comment it was um what i what i meant to say was that the fact that people were sleeping on on the footpath and of course he was driving under the influence of alcohol he lost control and he drove over them yeah. had there been no people there he would have probably injured himself and had a car accident okay um if you draw a comparison between alistair pereira's accident and salman khan's both were under the influence of alcohol both drove over people sleeping on the pavement and i don't think this is going to end with salman khan or alistair pereira there're going to be many more and many more such innocent lives are going to go mm. so when i wrote that tweet i was angry with the government for not providing us the infrastructure <coughs> i wasn't defending salman and saying that he wasn't at fault of course because uh, drinking under the influence of alcohol is a crime and my heart goes out for people like mohammed kaleem and and i wish that he wasn't in the accident but all i'm trying to say is 
Alistair Pereira got three years for killing seven people and going over 15. And Salman Khan, because he's a superstar, gets five years. What kind of logic is that? Okay, we'll explore that. But Nikhil Wagley, is Farah's explanation legitimate? Does it take away from what seems to all of us to be a callous statement to make in the enthusiasm to defend uh, uh, Salman Khan? Nikhil? I can understand defending Salman Khan, but this kind of uh, statement is totally senseless and not only senseless, senseless it is inhuman. People are praying for, for Salman Khan, but what happens to those victims who are there for 13 years? One has died, yeah. one has lost his feet and four more are injured. Yeah. So they have not got compensation. Yeah. Barkha, this is justice denied, justice delayed, but not denied. But yeah. this is a classic system a classic case of rotten judicial system. Mm. Police mishandled the case, yeah. defense delayed the case, main witness was threatened. How he died, we don't know. He was put in jail, he ran away from his home. Ravindra Patil, I am, I am speaking about Ravindra Patil, constable who was on duty to guard Salman. He died in between in 2007. Nobody is asking question. This is a classic case of delayed justice. And, and police, initially, police refused to clamp 304 on Salman. Yeah. He was freed in 24 hours. Nobody asking this question. I am not happy because this case has shown us ugly face of Indian system. Okay, those so are strong words and I want to, I want to take the them back to the panel, Nikhil. But Zafar Sareshwala, you're a friend of the Khan family. Uh, you're seen to be the... Bar, uh, the bar, 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 yeah, 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 Farah, quick rebuttal there and then Zafar and Sohail. Please, quickly. Farah, quickly. Yes, yes I just want to understand, uh, just say one thing here. I didn't mean to be callous. I, I didn't mean to be what, I, what you say I am. But there is a comparison between the pavement dwellers who died, whether it was Alistair Pereira or Salman Khan. Tomorrow there will be another drunk driving incident and more people will die. Shouldn't the government but not the allow fault, the poor people the to sleep the on the big main roads and allow and them to sleep in but, the gullies? But Farah, hang on. I mean, you're yes, saying that the is, fault, of course the fault it is, is of course, the, fault of course is of the it poor is. man who doesn't have a house over, a roof over his head and not of the person who's drinking and driving. No, no, no. I, I'm blaming the gov. No, I'm blaming. I'm blaming the government. I'm not saying Salman is faultless. I'm saying he is to blame. But I'm saying why five years? Why not three years? N why Nikhil, not the Nikhil, Nikhil, quick response like Alistair Alistair Pereira Pereira Nikhil, quick Alistair Pereira killed seven Nikhil, people. Nikhil, Nikhil, you have a question for Farah? No, no. I want to ask her. Does she know Indian reality? Why people sleep on pavement? It is because they have no option. They have no house. That is the problem. Yes, and I she know. And she's government. Ha, ha, housing, so the government house, should provide totally the infrastructure. Housing is totally different problem. Yes. Is government responsible for Salman Khan's drinking and rash driving? Yeah. Let us answer this. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good point. And Zafar Sareesh, what Wala, you answer is going it. on? Zafar, yeah. Okay, I, I, but uh, okay, are you okay? Hang on, hang let, on, let hang me on. Answer that. Hang let on. me answer that. Farah, Farah, hang on. Let I me quickly get... answer that. No, Farah. Poor people sleep on pavements. And these kind of people make statements. Yeah. Totally inhuman, senseless. Yeah. Zafar, Zafar, let's bring you in. Zafar, let's bring you in. You're a family friend of Salman Let Khan me quickly Salim. answer Farah, that. Let me I'll quickly answer chance. that. Farah, I'll give you a chance to argue back. I want to bring in the others now. Zafar, please go ahead with your thoughts today. You see, for people who are the victims, it's very difficult to understand all this poor Salman, poor Salman business. Why? I mean, yes, it's, it's unfortunate that anyone has to go into jail, but it's the consequence of his own action. So why this huge wave, tidal wave of sympathy for him, forgetting Muhammad Kaleem, forgetting Noorullah who died? Zafar Sareshwala. Uh, Barkha, here are three things. Yeah. First of all, you know, the kind of tweets with the people from Bollywood have made are appalling. I mean, there's no justification. They're absolutely callous. There's no justification for that. Even the Khan family would not approve these okay. kind of statements because I know them. Okay. Second, second, uh, yes, the victims are there. And Barkha, we are uh, forgetting one thing. Right at the outset, the Khan family had uh, deposited few lakhs of rupees yeah, for the victims. True. But till today, that money that's has not true. reached to the victims. That's true. None of the victims got that. So they had, they had deposited that money in 2002 itself. Now I'll come to I the genesis lakhs. of the whole issue. Hmm. This case was created to teach him a lesson. It was just a pure accident. There are victims. 
But this 304 was an afterthought of then government of the day. They just wanted to teach Salman Khan a lesson. And for God's sake, he spent 18 nights in, on, on that day. And then the kind of hue and cry which was made again when this case was started, you know, bringing a public prosecutor. I mean, their whole vibe was to teach Salman Khan a lesson. So for me, the victims are there already. And Salman Khan is also a victim. For 13 years, he Salman has been suffering. Salman Khan is also uh, no, a victim. I don't agree Barka, with that. Okay, Barka, I want to take that. that statement to the this panel. This victim of Salman Khan. Listen to yeah. me, the victims no, are no, there. No, 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 I don't agree and with Salman, listen no, to no, me, no. let me complete. I don't agree. I, didn't, I, I, I will did tell not, you one thing. Let me, let me complete. Please, Mr. Wagle. Let me complete. Let Stop me complete. protecting Salman. Talk. You know, he has committed a crime. In the court itself, Salman Khan's lawyer, Salman Khan's lawyer offered Salman that Khan's lawyer delayed the, delayed the case and they and, pressurized and the you business. Give us three years. Okay, one minute. One minute. No, no, they never pressurized. You this is your, your figment of your imagination. Take the this case of Savitra Pati. of your imagination. No Kalin's pressure was made on the I want to, I want to know. I am giving example. On the contrary, they paid money right at the outset. They delayed the so case this was actually a ploy created by the government okay, of the day me, to no, teach Salman Khan a lesson. I am leaving you Sohail and then Mahesh. One minute. One minute. We went to high court. Nikhil, Nikhil. We filed PIL in high court. Before Justice Shah, Justice Ajit Shah, he ordered compensation of 19 lakhs to victim within a week. Salman didn't pay voluntarily. Okay, let me let me. He break. paid because of High Court order. One minute. Mahesh but that money is paid. Mahesh right at the beginning. Mulani. Okay, listen. That money is with High Court because of the some because of some dispute. I, in I want to. I want to go. Do you why, know that? Why, why that money didn't go to the victim? That because money, if even if it would have been three families. times in 13 years, why that because money is still lying? Sir, this is because of the dispute in victims' families. Okay, I think you both had your say. But what, what is Salman to do with that? Okay, Mahesh, but what is Salman Mahesh to do with that? To with he that. deposited Please the money right at the outset. Nikhil and Zafar. But there is a punishment for this crime. Mahesh. No. Not only compensation. Nikhil, I'll come back to you. That is Nikhil disproportionate. Nikhil and Zafar, I'm going to shout over you. I'm now going to, to you I'm going to have to interrupt you and bring your mics down. I'm going to have to bring your mics down because others have to speak. Politicians put pressure. Okay, Sohail, very quickly then, Mahesh. Sohail, Zafar Sureshwala just said Salman Khan is a victim as well. How is Salman Khan a victim? That's what Nikhil Wagle is getting so exercised about. Yeah, so uh, my request to Nikhil Wagle would be to allow me to finish because I have not interrupted him. And frankly, my eardrums are bursting at the intensity of decibels. So I'll make a limited point from what I've understood about this gentleman said. I believe he says that the family of Salman Khan may have gone through trials and tribulations. That is his belief. I have mentioned in my article pointedly this morning yeah. that there are very severe issues related to the victims' families, the people who, the one person who died and the people who were injured. From Kaleem Saab's comments, it is quite evident that they have not received compensation. Hmm. You see, whether the money was deposited, not deposited, whose fault it is, whether government, system, judge, irrelevant. Yeah. The point is that Kaleem Saab is sitting in Uttar Pradesh. Yeah. Salman Khan will go to jail. Yeah. No one's lives have, have improved. We keep talking about in a platitudinal manner about the so-called justice system and that finally it's a great leveler. Where is it a leveler? The people who are involved, one person is going to jail after 13 years. One person is sitting in Uttar Pradesh. The family of the, of the person who died, we can't trace. We don't know yeah. what their condition is. Yeah. So you yeah. tell me, what kind of justice are we talking about? And why should we be self-congratulatory? Yes. Okay. Why now, should I, now, we now, now, congratulate now, Mahesh, the Indian Mahesh, justice system Now Mahesh today? and Shobha, and then I want to go back to Mohammed Kaleem. Ma uh, Mahesh, Zafar Sireshwala says his most provocative remark, Salman Khan is also a victim, something that Farah is endorsing. But think of what Muhammad Kaleem is speaking today as the rich and the famous of India are asking why people sleep on pavements. I mean, it just so, makes us seem so classist and out of sync with what drives people to desperation. Is Salman Khan a victim, Mahesh? Uh, you know, I, 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 think, I think both Zafar Bhai and Farah and they're both friends of mine. I, you know, I think they way off the mark. I, I'm sure when they reflect uh, upon what they've said, they'll realize it's crassly sensitive for, to say what they've said. Because, uh, you know, you can't play the victim card. The man was allegedly drunk. He's been found to have been drunk. He was speeding. 
And uh, uh, Farah should rely, I mean, she probably doesn't know, but the Supreme Court actually convicted Alistair Pereira on... I have to interrupt you, Mahesh. I did not... I, uh, Mahesh, I did not say... I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you. I did not say he was not drunk. I did not say he did not commit a crime. I just no, no, said, I'm not saying you said that. that. I'm not if saying there was saying, nobody I'm not sleeping on the pavement, he wouldn't have run no, no, over I, You're there. putting words yeah. in my mouth. I, I, I didn't... I, I didn't I am I not. Say, I am not. I, no, no. I but Mahesh, but you know I am not said. torturing him to be a victim. I am not torturing him to be a victim. Okay. Let's. Yes, I do. No, I am not saying you said he's a victim. I just said your, that your statement about he the, is about guilty of dr not, drunk driving. Not, not letting people sleep on pavements is. Is, uh, is, is unfortunate. I, I, I can only say that. I don't want to. This is not about okay, you and this is not about Zafar Bhai. This is really about Salman and the victims of the Okay, action. I just want to ask but you as a lawyer I'm tomorrow. Is, I, wa I, want to ask you, I want to ask you as a lawyer. Tomorrow there will be another case. I want to ask you as a lawyer. Tomorrow there will be more people killed on a yes. pavement because another drunk person drove over them. Do you think that, that would be nice? Do you think that would be nice? Again, innocent lives would be lost. Well, the answer is not what to I'm get... What I'm trying to say, we need to your suggest question to people. Even means, the, the, the remedy... Give them home. One minute, Farah, now you had your word, just let me speak. There's no point going on, there's no point going on uh, unilaterally. Let me respond okay, to you. Sorry. I've understood what you said. You're basically saying that it could be repeated tomorrow. The answer to the fact, answer to preventing deaths of pavement dwellers is not to yes. remove pavement dwellers from sleeping on the pavement because the government doesn't have adequate housing. Okay. There is no, there's a shortage of revenue. The answer is to stop people from drunk driving and speed driving. Okay, Shobha Day, let's bring you in. You've heard Farha, you've heard yes, Zafar. Yes, but I also said, uh, no, can I just, uh, just, Farah, can I just say one thing? Shobha, Farah, just, just, Farah, just you can one respond thing, after one Shobha. Barha, okay, one, one sentence thing. then Shobha. Okay, Farah, go. Okay, okay. One minute. Shobha, okay. Shobha. No, I just want... Okay, let's show us it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Barkha. Barkha, uh, you know, Barkha this is I didn't really say the that time for sobriety. The victim, victims are there. Uh, time for sobriety. Just for my one minute. Just for my one minute. I can't yell minute. above everybody else. Shobha, so tell me when ahead. I can speak. Please go ahead, Shobha. Thank you. Thanks, Barkha. Uh, the thing is, across the board, it's been seen as a victory of the common man. That's what it's been looked at. Uh, dispassionately, without personalities involved. What we are talking about right now in, in the context of the tweets is the entitled elite of India versus the hopelessly poor and the disenfranchised on every level. This is a different issue. And the minute we get uh, you know, confusing and conflicting arguments into this, this is not about Alistair Pereira and why should we be comparing the two cases in the first place? Salman Khan is a phenomenon. He has a huge amount of support across not just his fans but within the film industry. We shouldn't even be talking about how many crores are going to be lost because of what the judgment says. The thing is, the judge has <coughs> pronounced a judgment we have to respect. Yeah. Everybody is the same in the eyes of the law. Yeah. We cannot bring in arguments about, you know, what might happen in hypothetical situations uh, in future, whether there will be more cases of celebrity uh, drunken driving and accidents. And also it's insensitive. Is beyond it is the scope and realm of to today's make the debate arguments and this and kind of discussion. Opinion, These are all hypothetical questions. Can, it's can, like saying, is it going to tomorrow there could be a third world war? No, but you know, this is an emotional response. I get it. <laughs> It said in a moment of, uh, you know, great uh, kind of uh, overwhelming love for Salman, I get that. But I think we should just drop it and leave it there and not make it worse but you by know, but you know, uh, but you know, indexing the but very you know, people I, I just want who to are the victims of uh, an I, unfortunate accident. I just want to ask Mohammed. These are the poor, these are the victims, Absolutely. the real victims. One is dead, three are injured. I just want to bring in Mohammed Kaleem back into the conversation and then uh, I just want to read out some completely outrageous tweets that have been posted by Abhijit, the well-known singer, and we we'll hope to have him on the phone line in a moment from now. Uh, Kaleem Saab, here are some people who have said that it's the wrong of the government that people were sleeping on the pavement. Uh, maybe people don't understand that because of the poverty, the people are sleeping on the pavement that people are sleeping on the pavement. Today, there is a musician, who has also said that the roads are for cars and cars, for people who are sleeping on the pavement that people are sleeping on the pavement. गाड़ियों के लिए होती हैं लोगों के सोने के लिए नहीं और उन्होंने आगे ये भी कहा कुत्ता रोड पर सोएगा तो कुत्ते की मौत मरेगा रोड्स गरीब की बाप की नहीं हैं। I mean this is the most shocking thing I've heard I think ever कुत्ता रोड पे सोएगा कुत्ते की मौत मरेगा he may be he's obviously being metaphorical but it's it's awfully callous 
रोड गरीब की बात की नहीं है एंड टू से होमलेस फॉर ईयर कलीम साहब जब इस तरह की बयानबाजी आती है कि गरीब आदमी सड़क पर क्यों सोता है तो आपको उत्तर प्रदेश में बैठ कर ये सब सुनने से बहुत गुस्सा आता होगा जी क्या बोलेंगे आप कि गरीबी की वजह से क्यों सोते हैं मतलब लोगों को समझाइए हालांकि उनको समझाने की जरूरत नहीं होती कि किसी के पास घर हो तो वो पेवमेंट पे क्यों सोएगा वो हमारे रहने का वहां व्यवस्था होता तो मैं थोड़ी सोता वहां पे बिल्कुल बिल्कुल आपने बिल्कुल ठीक बात कही और आपने मुआवजा की बात कही तो आपको मुआवजा मिला है अभी तक कलीम नहीं कुछ भी नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं बिग इशू बरखा बिल्कुल नहीं मिला मुआवजा आप कलीम नहीं।, नहीं हमको कुछ नहीं मिला है नाउ दिस इज व्हाट वी मस्ट फोकस ऑन इन द मीडिया या सोहेल गो हेड सोहेल गो हेड एंड आई वांट टू गेट अभिजीत ऑन द फोन लाइन यस सोहेल बरखा इट्स इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड एंड आई मस्ट एक्सप्रेस माय माय लैक ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ ऑफ दिस एंड महेश न्यू अबाउट इट बट ए वी डिडंट नो दैट some monies were deposited b what happens in these 13 years and this is only the first base hmm. there will be appeals this case will drag on yeah what actually happens to the families what happens to the poor what happens to the deprived in this country and it is unfair to only blame a salman khan that i'm glad that we're discussing it in that context otherwise the context would never arisen so in many ways this whole issue has been brought to the fore because salman has been convicted otherwise this wouldn't have been brought to the but fore but sohail what so do you I have to say but sohail what do you have to say but sohail what do you have to say about faraz statements why are people sleeping on the pavement abhijit kutta road pe soega kutte ki maut marega what is all this nonsense look i i must i must make full disclosure i know farah well i know her parents well i know the stock she comes from the values she espouses i think as mahesh said or i think shobha said it must have been in an overwhelming affectionate moment and she has clarified it abhijit on another channel clarified it in the most stupid manner by saying that look i've slept uh, you know on roads but i never chose a road i used to go to a, a, a train station to sleep at the point is celebrities whether it's fara abhijit whoever it is must also remember that today public opinion is has dramatically altered we are seeking a more equal and just society we are seeking a level playing field we also want to bring our heroes down that reality exists which i mentioned in my article yeah so with all these conundrums that we face in our daily lives a certain level of responsibility needs to creep in yeah but again barkha without knocking the media and i think y'all have done a splendid job by getting kaleem saab on the on the program i think the media now move, needs to move as shobha also said to solution mode we need to carry on a solution based investigation or or expose or intense gaze on what happens in cases such as these what okay. happens to the families what happens to the victims or will they be remembered much like the upar victims yeah. once a year when we remember I, the tragedy th th that a, is to my mind the way forward i think you make an important point about the fickleness of the media as well now nikhil wagle i want to bring you in you you've been very angry you're saying this verdict is no template at all but uh, farah is pointing out that actually salman khan has got harsher punishment than either in the elista perera case or in the sanjeev nanda bmw case where sanjeev nanda only got 2 years as far as i remember so why are you uh, seeing this is some kid glove treatment of salman khan you have mohammad kaleem sitting there he is saying mujhe muawza hi nahi mila mujhe compensation hi nahi mila nikhil barkha yes nikhil let us not be satisfied with this verdict i am not concerned of uh, uh, concern about whether the punishment uh, is of 5 years or 3 years yeah there are many unanswered questions salman's people defense lawyers tried to pressurize witnesses these are allegations we have to investigate them why police uh, did we handle the case initially why 34 304 was not camped after public uh, outcry this section was clamped for which he he has he was held responsible today hmm. third question is that are we going to reform motor vehicle act what about compensation 19 lakhs interim compensation was deposited 
in Mumbai High Court in 2002. Yes. What happened to that amount? It was interim compensation. Yes. Why this court did not say anything about compensation? That's a very important question. I think these, these are point. basic questions. That's my point. I, I, I want Mahesh to come in, but first Zafar. Zafar, you said Salman Khan is also a victim and you set the cat among the pigeons with that. Explain yourself. No, Barkha, what I said, see, I never, uh, I al always mentioned about the victims. And that's why I brought this 19 lakhs. That what happened? Uh, I'm uh, glad that Mr. Nikhil brought this. 19 lakhs lying since 2002. Hmm. And I think you should take the cue. You have brought this Kaleem Saab. You should also hunt the uh, gentleman who died. And what about his family? Yes. And at least we all who are together here, yes. why not we do something and create some corpus for these but people. But so where is this money? And Salman Khan where and Salman is Khan's family lakhs? is known. Where is, is this known 19 lakhs? Known for their uh, Zafar uh, philanthropic Sarishwala activity. It is with High Court. Mahesh, what do you make of this? Uh, this is very curious. Mahesh, the court today said no more compensation. You have Kaleem here saying, Mujhe to kuch mila hi nahi. You have Nikhil pointing out, Zafar pointing out, 19 lakhs is with the High Court. Where is this money? Well, I don't know. Nik Nikhil Vagle seems to suggest that the, some petition was filed at his, in which he was involved and that's how the compensation was paid. It wasn't a voluntary payment by Salman and it was paid under the orders of the court. If that's the case, then the very people who filed the petition should have told the court that please give liberty for the victims uh, of this accident to withdraw that amount from court or let us withdraw it and hand it over to them under the court's aegis. It yes. shouldn't be lying in court just accumulating uh, nominal interest. It no, should no. be, uh, it should it be actually lying be paid in out. Court I mean, there's no point uh, money remaining in court which is meant for the victims. Nikhil, what are you saying? Which dispute? I'm this not is aware lying in court please. because of some dispute. Between whom? Who is the dispute between? Families of victims. Court, court contacted these people, families of victims and their lawyers. Mm. But they filed another case, I think wife of the dead person yes. and father of the dead person, okay. they have some dispute. That's why that money is lying in okay. high court. Okay, okay. We should follow that. Now, Farah, I want to bring you back in. I'm taking last comments from all of you. Farah, you heard what Kaleem said. Mere paas koi aur jaga hoti, to main thodi okay. na sora hota pavement par. And yes. look at Abhijit's comments. I mean, do you really want to be clubbed with Abhijit's today? But, you know, you've gone on to say, I have a right to my opinion. Barkha, I want to be, I want to be... Yeah, go ahead, Farah. Uh, I would like to say one thing here. I do not endorse Abhijit's uh, comments. I would not say that dogs only sleep on the streets. Yeah. I feel for the poor, and that's exactly why I said the government has a right to provide housing for these poor people. And it angers me because we pay our taxes, we see poor people not having housing, uh, any facility. And, and what uh, Mohammed Kaleem lost his leg in an accident because he happened to be sleeping on the street and Salman in his drunk driving ran him over. Had he not been sleeping there, he wouldn't have lost his leg. So my point here is my anger is towards the government, not towards the poor people because I don't think they're at fault, they don't have any option. Shobha De, your last thoughts today. The fact of the matter is that, it, as I said in the beginning of this program, there seem to be two parallel universes, two parallel ways of thinking. There is no intersection. I mean, K Kaleem is probably listening to all this and with, with, with deep cynicism today. Well, uh, Barkha, the thing is that uh, Hollywood and Bollywood, they both exist in their own self-created bubbles. And I don't uh, expect uh, anything beyond that. It is a fantasy world. It is a very different reality. And they are expressing their solidarity the best way they can. But my point is that Salman Khan has been a free man. He has had 13 years of freedom uh, in which to introspect and maybe to, to, uh, to think about what happened uh, those very many years ago. I think he has tried in his own way. He's uh, gotten into you know, uh, creating a brand. He's gotten into humanitarian acts which have benefited a lot of people. Perhaps, and we should maybe give him the benefit of the doubt, it's been a very strong and bitter learning experience for him. And maybe he's truly uh, uh, sorry for what happened, except that now it's a done deal. He has been convicted and he should take it on the chin like a man and, and deal with it uh, uh, like he does in his movies, okay. heroically. And there'll be a lot more sympathy for him from the public and people will think much more of him. 
if we did that. कलीम साहब आपने कहा मुआवजा मेरे लिए जरूरी है सलमान खान को क्या होता है इससे मुझे क्या फर्क पड़ता है लेकिन एक नूरुल्ला थे आपके साथ वो तो मारे गए उनकी फैमिली को तो फर्क पड़ेगा कि सलमान खान को जो पनिशमेंट मिलनी चाहिए वो मिलती है या नहीं जी आपको लगता नहीं कि एक एक चीज होती है न्याय की जो नूरुल्ला थे आपके साथ नूरुल्ला जो मारे गए उनको तो फर्क पड़ेगा की सलमान खान जेल जाते हैं या नहीं उनकी फैमिली को उस फर्क तो पड़े गई आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे हमारे सब दर्शकों को आज आपको तो अपने गांव में आप क्या करते हैं आजकल कुछ नहीं घर पे बैठा रहता हूँ कुछ काम वाम नहीं कर कुछ भी नहीं जी और आप कह रहे हैं एक पैसा मुआवजा नहीं मिला अभी तक कोर्ट के तरफ से खाली डेढ़ लाख रुपए मिला था वही दवाई दरमद में सब खर्चा हो गया है अच्छा वो हमको नहीं दिया है कोर्ट के कोर्ट के तरफ से मिला था बस जी महेश जेठ मिलानी लास्ट थॉट्स टू नाइट थर्टी सेकेंड टू ऑल ऑफ यू विल स्टार्ट विद महेश well i you know but uh, uh, i think that the facts of this case are best left the facts the law and the judgment on this case is best left to the sobriety and wisdom of the judge himself and the, we've had the sessions court verdict the only disturbing feature is the 13 year delay in this case that troubles me and we really have to do something i mean the the real need right now of the r uh, is to make sure that these endemic delays are up on an end to as regards other people waiting in on one side or the other i say to salman god save me from my friends and i say to the section of the media that please don't be a lynch mob not everything that salman's lawyers do must be uh, you know castigated and said uh, to be unfair or somehow subversive of the judicial system okay out of time so hail uh, 20 seconds last thoughts salman has been convicted but india and media will remain on trial the only solution and the only way forward is to prevent and to create an architecture of jurisprudence which doesn't create a kaleem sitting in uttar pradesh languishing and 13 years for a hit and run case to come to fruition that Zaf is the biggest learning today uh, zafar <coughs> zafar very brief last thoughts zafar yeah i think uh, i am very glad you brought the victim kaleem and you have also mentioned about nurullah i think we should create a system where a corpus of compensation is created and the khan family which i know not as a superstar or film family i know that family as a philanthropist salman has given 42 crores in his charity i think we should create a corpus for such victims that no victim remains without compensation nikhil very brief last comment let us follow up two things compensation and reforms in motor vehicle act hmm. and my little advice to salman khan dear you are a superstar but try, try to be human shobha that's what you tweeted today now is the time to be human we'll end with you getting the last word well uh, that was uh, before the judgment of course and what i meant was whether it's victory in victory or defeat the right attitude for salman khan to adopt would be one of humility and dignity and project that to his millions of fans the world over it will just make him a bigger man we we'll leave it there lots to think about tonight it is in many ways a landmark verdict it will be appealed in the high court and we'll keep an eye on this story many questions raised about our judicial system the pace of justice how justice is delayed and in effect often denied and yet before the law all are equal mahesh jethmalani so he'll say shobha de nikhil wagle fara khan ali zafar sareshwala and most of all mohammad kaleem thank you for joining us on the buckstops here tonight